Good afternoon. My name is Mitch Worley, and I'm a reptile keeper here at the Gladys Porter Zoo. Ever since I was a little kid, snakes have always been my favorite animals. And one of my favorite snakes when I was a kid, and even today, is the green tree python, which I have one here today for you. Now, I remember when I was a little kid, my parents got me this book called Verdi. The story of a little baby green tree python who starts as a little yellow guy and grows up to be a big, beautiful green tree python. So we're gonna go through the book, we're gonna read it together, and then after the video, I'm gonna tell you guys some really cool facts about green tree pythons, all right? So let's sit back and enjoy Verdi. All right, on a small tropical island, the sun rose high above the steamy jungle. A mother python was sending her hatchlings out into the forest the way all mother pythons drew. Grow up big and green, as green as the tree's leaves. She called to her yellow, yellow babies as they happily scattered amongst the trees. But Ver Verdi dawdled. He was proudly eyeing his bright yellow skin. He especially liked the bold stripes that zigzagged down his back. Why the hurry to grow up big and green, he wondered. Maybe some of the older snakes in the jungle could tell him. Verdi ventured into the treetops to look for them. Umbles, Aggie, and Ribbon were lazy on some branches nearby. Verdi peered at the droopy green bodies. It's not polite to stare, commented Aggie. Umbles burped and groaned. It's taking nearly four weeks for that last lizard to digest. <laughs> I surely do like lizards, but lizards don't like me. <laughs> Why don't lizards like you, asked Verdi. He said, don't interrupt. Umbles grumbled. Dear me, whined Aggie, if I don't shed soon, this itchy skin will drive me bananas. Verdi tapped a tune with his little tail as he waited to speak. Stop that, Verdi. It makes me nervous, Ribbon complained. Besides, you'll never grow up to be properly green always, interrupting and constantly fidgeting. Verdi couldn't imagine being in such a hurry to be like them, and he really wanted to keep his sporty, cool, beautiful yellow stripes. Hoping to find snakes that weren't so boring, Verdi slithered away. Dozer was snoring in a tree not far from the others. Hello, said Verdi. Do you want to climb trees with me? I'm ti tired, Dozy Dozer growled. Go do a few laps around the jungle, okay? Verdi's heart sank. Greens were not only lazy and boring, they were rude. At the top of a very tall tree, Verdi gripped one branch with his tail and another with his little snake jaws. I will never be lazy, boring, or green, he thought. I will jump and climb and keep moving so fast that I will stay yellow and striped forever. Then Verdi let go. From a distance, the greens watched. Oh my, they chorused. Ribbon shook his head. At this rate, he'll be lucky to make it to his first molt. Aggie nodded. He's likely to put an eye out on a branch. Umbles moaned, he may not live to turn green. But one day, Verdi's skin began to peel, revealing a pale green stripe stretching along his whole body. Cack, he gasped. How can this be? I'm the speediest snake in the jungle, and I'm still turning green. He raced down to the river, grabbing up a mouthful of rough leaves. Verdi flung himself into the water. If I can't run this green off, I'll scrub it off, he thought. His frantic splashing caught the eye of a large bottom feeder, cruising the murky depths. Yum, the old fish hummed. Lunch. Before the fish could hail, Verdi, under the frightened snake bit, the snake bit him on his nose. With a blast of his rubbery lips, the great fish sneezed, sending Verdi into the air. Slapping onto the soggy shore, Verdi swimmed out of reach. Whew, that was close, he sputtered. Every inch of his body was covered with wet, gloppy mud. Hmm, kind of lumpy, kind of brown. It sure beats being green, though. He left the mud and continued on. 
but the soft brown mud dried into a hard gray shell, and Verdi could barely move. If he even budged, the stuff cracked off in jagged chunks. As each piece fell away, Verdi could see that his body was even greener than before. This is terrible, cried Verdi. He pictured himself hanging around in droopy loops, itching and complaining and worrying all day like all the other old greens. He looked up into the sky where the sun blazed a beautiful yellow, just like the color of his skin. Then he pulled a vine onto the top of a tree. Launching himself from the treetop, Verdi startled a flock of colorful birds. He became dizzy with the light. Sure, the bright sun and his soft, soft, lofty speed would turn him gold again. In his joy, Verdi forgot he would fall back to earth. The snake loves the book. Whippity, whippity, whip, frap, wham! Plummeting through the trees and branches, Verdi landed in a crooked sprawl across the log on the forest floor. He couldn't move. Help, he yelled. Those snakes look familiar to you? You know any of those snakes? <laughs> As usual, the greens had been watching Verdi's antics. They moved quickly to where he lay. Didn't we say it would come to this, Umbles said, shaking his head in disappointment. Aggie sighed. Luckily, things he still got two good eyes. They gently lifted Verdi up to a safer place where they could watch over him while he healed. Nearly splinted to a branch, Verdi had no choice but to listen to the greens as they gabbed. Remember how I used to streak across the floor's floor, Ribbon asked? Quick as lightning, answered Aggie, and I climbed giant trees like they were nothing. They grew taller than you know. The things I dared to run down and swallow, Umbles bragged. Wild boar were no match for me. That's impossible. Green tree pythons do not eat wild boar. Verdi was astonished. You used to run, run and climb and hunt giant pigs? What happened to you guys? Ribbon crashed, just like you, Aggie replied. I took a terrible fall and almost put an eye out. Then old Umbles here nearly choked to death. Now we all prefer the quiet life, a warm perch, a little sunshine, and an occasional good meal. Sounds nice to me. The Greens rambled on about their days of glory, and Ver Verdi settled in on his branch, listening intently. Finally, one afternoon, Umble said, looks like you are ready to go again. He carefully untied Verdi from the branch. You are welcome to come with us, said Aggie. Ribbon agreed. The three Greens slipped quietly back into the forest. Verdi wasn't ready to join them quite yet. He wasn't sure where he wanted to go, so he just stretched out and stayed put until the sun went down. He listened to the forest come alive. Wow, that's cool. All the cool animals. Time passed. The sun and moon took turns in the sky. Verdi marveled as the full moon grew thinner every night. Then, when he watched patiently as it slowly grew round again, he wondered why he hadn't noticed that before. Verdi became so green that he blended perfectly in with the leaves. So he was so still that other creatures walked right by without even seeing him. One fine morning, as Verdi basked in the sunshine, two small yellow snakes approached. They tapped and fidgeted as they stared. Get a load of this old green guy, one of them whispered. Do you think he ever moves? The other snickered. I seriously doubt it. They're just like I used to be, thought Verdi, and now what I was afraid to be. He looked at his big green body and slowly smiled. How would you like to climb trees with me, he asked. With you? The yellows were astonished. I'll even show you my fancy figure eight move, Verdi replied, though he was a little worried about putting his eye out. With practice, the three snakes performed a perfect Triple figure eight, leaping and looping with his little striped friends, Verdi laughed. I may be big and very green, but I'm still me. What an awesome book. So what the author was trying to get at here was obviously about growing up, becoming different, and changing as you get older, which happens to all of us, even snakes. So what happened here with green tree pythons is they are born yellow, and they go through something called an ontoegetic 
color uh, mutation or a color change. I may have mispronounced that word, but you get the idea. They're born yellow, and as they get older, they turn green. So when this snake was born, he looked just like Verdi. Now they usually start changing their colors between six and as soon as they're about two years old is when they start to really look green. Now it doesn't happen all at once. Like I said, it takes a year or two, maybe even three years for them to become fully green. Okay, now you, they want to be green. They don't stay yellow their whole lives because this helps them camouflage into the rainforest to stay hidden. Okay, now green tree pythons come from northern Australia and they can be found all over um, some different islands down in the southern parts of Indonesia. Um, they're a fairly common snake to find. They're always going to be high up arboreal in the trees. Arboreal meaning they live in the trees. Um, now, obviously, if I have a snake out and I'm reading a book and my eyes are not focused on the snake, that must mean the snake is not dangerous. This snake is not venomous at all. It's a completely harmless snake. Um, now, I wouldn't recommend a green tree python for your first pet snake to have at home. Um, they can be a little nippy at times, um, but that's not because they're mean or they're aggressive. Um, green tree pythons and lots of other arboreal snakes are more, in, uh, are more prone to bite first and ask questions later because life in the trees is a lot harder than life on the ground. And, you know, things like birds or mice, small mammals, whatever, that's a lot more rare to come across if you live up in a tree. So you need to be always ready to go. So any kind of movement by these guys' snakes' head, they'll usually strike out at that. But it's not because they're mean and they want to bite you. That's just their everlary, evolutionary instincts kicking in, telling them to, oh, something just moved. I need to try to eat it. That's all. And, you, and that is a lot of arboreal snakes are that way. It just helps them survive. Now, like I said before, green tree pythons are big time rodent eaters, all right? So they live most of the time up in the trees. And then at night, they're nocturnal, meaning they're most active at night. They come down to low hanging branches and they kind of just sit, kind of like this guy is doing right now. And he'll kind of sit there with his head down. And if a little rodent runs by, bam, he'll grab it, eat it, go back up to the top, and repeat the process again. Also in the book, we talked about shedding skins, okay? Now, when we start to notice those color changes after about six months to a year, we'll start to notice after the sheds. There'll be a few green scales, the next shedding process, a few more green scales. All snakes, the way they grow is by shedding their skin. And they do this every so often, um, depends on their eating schedule and the temperatures of their environment. Um, but every time a snake grows, theoretically, he's growing as well. So it's a very interesting thing. All of the snakes here at the zoo, they all shed. Um, some snakes, you know, can shed every two weeks, like some baby snakes that are growing really fast. They'll shed all the time. And then snakes like our big giant reticulated python. That snake doesn't shed as often because it's so big. Um, it's a slow grower because it's already an adult. But snakes will continue to grow throughout their whole lives, so snakes will always continue to shed. Um, because unlike people, they just keep growing and growing and growing as long as there's good temperatures and a good source of food. So I hope you guys really enjoyed the, me reading this book. Um, as you can tell, I don't do this professionally. Um, I'm not a teacher. I don't really read books to people. But um, I had to take this opportunity to read one of my favorite books as a kid and one of my very favorite animals, if not my, one of my very favorite species of snakes we have here at the zoo. Now something even more special why we really wanted to do this is this snake is a dad. We have five beautiful baby green tree pythons that are in the back of the herpetarium right now. They hatched out um, about a week ago today. They started hatching out. Um, they hatched out of eggs, right? They incubated for about two months, for about 60 days, right? She laid them in her nest box, and then we put them in um, basically like a, a tub of wear with humid sphagnum moss in it, and we put it in an incubator in the back of the herpetarium, and we just let them sit, and we checked on them, and for about 60 days, they started hatching out. So now they're living in a little tub of container. They're all hanging out on top of each other. 
and then in about two weeks, they'll have their first shed, and after they have their first shed, we'll offer them their first food, their first prey item, their first meal, which is very exciting, and then we'll just raise them up to adults. So thank you guys for tuning in and watching. Feel free to ask us any questions you have about reptiles, snakes, or anything about the zoo, and make sure you guys come on by and check out our green tree pythons. Thanks. Have a great day.